It's a beautiful bacon day, Cookie Crusaders. Today we're going to be using Financer, Milk, Frost Queen, Sea Fairy, and Cream Unicorn. We're going to be doing the monocle, the scroll, and the clock, and the toppings are going to be cooldowns on everybody. The main thing is focusing on as high damage resistance as you can, but if you can't put it on everybody, there are some exceptions. The main two being the defenders. That is because if their defense is fast enough and their health is high enough, you will be able to survive. But damage resistance is recommended as a good substat to keep your team alive just a little bit more. So as we go into it, we're going to be using Financer's ability to specifically help buff our strongest attacking cookie, which should be Frost Queen in this instance. And we can double check this by going into our attack base and seeing that Frost Queen has 71,000, where Sea Fairy has 69,000. So it may be different for you based on your star promotion and depending on your topping substats, but it should be between one of these two. Milk specifically is going to be keeping your team alive just a little bit longer because of how all the skills that do not target multiple units or all the AOE skills are directed all towards milk. If there is Espresso on the other team, if they have Rye Cookie with multiple bullets, if they have a Sea Fairy or a Frost Queen, milk cannot prevent all of that. But any single targeting units or any frontal attacking units, milk's going to do a really good job against. So as you can see, here's a classic summoner team doing a really good job taking out our front line, as most summoner teams can do. However, Sea Fairy and Financer keep up dealing a great deal of damage, and they even had a Wildberry on their team. So overall, decent battle. They were a little underleveled in treasure stats in comparison to us, but you can see that Sea Fairy and Frost Queen had plentiful damage against their entire setup, since there was plenty of creatures to deal damage too. As far as damage received, Financer is taking usually the brunt of all the damage, but that is because of the position of Financer. If the positions were flopped between Financer and Melk, Melk would actually be taking more, but the reason Melk's taking the majority still compared to other cookies is because of that taunt ability. So we're going to go ahead and keep fighting a few more teams. Obviously we're going to try and find some that don't have lower treasure levels, so that way you can see some more direct comparisons at the high master levels, but it's still good to have other teams fight it, regardless of their position, because you can still see what happens and what's going on. So for this team, for instance, obviously because their scrolls level five, they can't really push in enough damage to make a true difference. Cream Unicorn just can out heal it all, but all of the pressure is coming from our legendary cookies. So as you can see, even though it's a lower team, all of our damage is mainly focused between those two. Between the interruptions, the sea blasts, the skill cooldown stoppings, all of that's making a big difference. Now, here we go. We're fighting someone relatively at our rank now. They do have an AoE cookie, so that's going to be a little bit problematic for our mid-team, seeing as Melk cannot defend against that. But Cream Unicorn is going to be our savior, as well as the Monocle taking the healing brunt of our team. Yet again, we're still going to take some very heavy damage, but what Melk's doing is helping keeping that team moving just a little further, inching a little further on. We do end up losing Cream Unicorn, but Monocle's there to help keep the gain going, while Financer helps keep healing and buffing Frost Queen. And overall, we are overtaking their team in the long run. And don't forget that we're doing true damage with Melk because of the Magic Candy skill. So that is a big reason why we're able to bust through their front line, because not only are we chipping away with our wonderful legendaries, but our true damage is pushing through just quick enough to where their defensive line cannot hold too powerful. Now, not only that, don't forget that Financer, when protecting certain cookies, if they are attacked, does a bounce back against them. So that's very helpful too, and that's why Financer is doing a lot of damage in this comp, is because of the way that the protection's going and the way that Frost Queen and Seafarer are set up, the way that they get targeted very easily, they're actually being protected in a very good and synergized way. 
And as you can see, damage is pretty even across the board. Cream Unicorn is still doing great healing, but Frost Queen and Sea Fairy, they are just eaten through the end up of the other teams. So that was someone against our rank. Let's see if we can find someone just a little bit higher. Okay, so this person's running a speed build. That should be interesting, especially because of the weakness. Hopefully the monocle can come and clear up the weakness and the arrows from Caramel Arrow, but it is likely we'll take some pretty heavy burst damage, especially since they have Sorbet to try and take out our tanks. So it's a pretty good setup on their side of the field. And they're ranked 3000, so they're pretty good. But let's see if our interruptions and our skill freezes can take it through. And so we lose three of our frontal cookies. It looks like between the setup with Caramel Arrow and the knockback and the damage from their Sorbet being buffed by their financer, they were able to take out our front line. Once we lose our two front line cookies, it's pretty much game over for us. Granted, our legendary still did some great damage, but as you can see, Caramel Arrow was extremely buffed in this setup, and Sorbet, with the weakness from Eclair, was able to bypass our tanks so therefore we were not able to keep alive long enough to chip away at the enemy team and as you can see damage received here they took a lot of damage and there was some pretty good healing done overall but it did not end up working the way we wanted it to mostly because of caramel and sorbet on the enemy team but that's okay let's take it against one more battle see the results we're fighting yet again another similarly ranked kind of team very similar to the last setup, so we have good chances. Just depends on their topping layout, their monuments, their statue, their guild buffs. All that can take an account into how their battle is going to play out, but it'll be interesting to see. They are able to push through to take out at least Sea Fairy, so they do have more of an edge than the last team that we fought that had this exact same setup. But our monocle is keeping us moving forward. We have lost all of our DPS units. But yet again, Melk and Financer holding very strong. At this point, Financer is actually buffing Melk because that's the last high attacking unit to buff. But overall, we do not end up being able to take the lead at the end because they do have enough power to push through us. So in this instance, their Expresso was set up very well and they were able to do exactly as I said, interrupt and bypass Melk because Melk cannot stop Expresso. So it's not a perfect team, of course, but... These days I can't really show you a perfect team because there is so much diversity, so much change in cookies that you can find a wild variety in many different setups. Yes, I can show you very powerful teams, of course, like the team that we fought against right there. In fairness, they had a lot of star ascensions on two very important cookies versus us, not very star ascended in our DPS units, so kind of fighting an uphill battle in that sense, but Without excuses, if we think about it, the synergy of what their team does directly counters what our team is doing. And so that's why they were able to take the overall lead, and that's okay. There will always be counters to each team as the game develops and as there are more cookies available. So another big reason I built this team is because if we do get caviar or if we do get a legendary cookie, I really want to see if we can make that work in this type of setup. It's hard to say who we might replace. It's also hard to say who may just end up being too weak. So we'll see. But it's an interesting build, and it, it can work against a, a good variety of teams. Almost like the way that Dark Cow, two healers, and the two legendary DPS units worked in the older metas. So it's some interesting thoughts and an interesting build to work with. But what are your thoughts? Tell me your comments. And let me know if you would ever run something like this or if you think that this team would only work in future metas when we're not seeing caramel arrow pretty much dominate the end of the field because that's one of the main units we seem to see right now so we'll see if another cookie that comes out solves that issue or if we're just going to keep buffing caramel until it just becomes too oppressive to where they have to readjust i guess it's too soon to say for now Thank you so much for stopping by and have a wonderful day.